science students are eligible for is the option of co-op, which you can find on page number 24 and 25 of your books. Any student in an honors program can apply to co-op at the end of your first year, and admissions is based on a few main things. So it's based on your grades from first year, your work and volunteer experiences, both in high school and university, as well as an interview performance. Your co-op work terms will start the summer after your second year, and so you have all the second year to prepare yourself and go through those interviews to get those jobs. And the Co-op Career and Development Center will set you up with resume writing and interview skills workshops, so you'll really be at your best to perform those interviews when it comes time. I have a friend who did uh, some study computer science, and he did two consecutive work terms with Research in Motion, so popularly known as RIM, and he's now working there full-time as a software analyst after graduation. So it's not uncommon to have your co-ops actually turn into careers after graduation. And we offer both arts and science programs on our Brantford campus as well. And what's special about Brantford is that we have some of the most innovative programs with the appeal of small class sizes. What's key to all the programs on our Brantford campus is the core programming. This is a collection of courses that's required for students across the board. So no matter what program you're in, you're going to be taking these set courses. And this allows everyone to have a shared knowledge of some critical issues. So you can have those conversations with people from other majors and be on the same page. What's also important to many of our programs is practical placements and community involvement. My friend Rachel studied criminology, which is on page number 39 of your books, and she took a fourth year practical placement course where she volunteered with the Hamilton Juvenile Detention Center. She got to work with troubled youth there and really apply the classroom concepts that she had been learning in the field. And one of the partnerships that we're most proud of is that with the Nipissing Schulich School of Education. And this one allows our students to get their Bachelor of Arts in Contemporary Studies and their Bachelor of Education in our five-year concurrent education program. Again, practical placements are key here, and they'll start right from your first year. So that means by the time you graduate, you'll have had up to 22 weeks of in-classroom teaching experience. Alternative placements in your fourth year also allow you to explore your teaching abilities in a non-traditional classroom setting. So you can do this in a children's museum, maybe Toronto State Kids Hospital, or abroad through programs that we have with Italy and Kenya. Now fresh to the Brantford campus is our Bachelor of Arts and Science in Health Studies. And graduates of this program are going to have a well-rounded knowledge of both the sociological and physiological aspects of human health and well-being. So that's putting you in a great place if you're looking to pursue graduate studies or moving right into the workforce in the health industry, whether you're looking to be a pediatrician, a public health educator, or even the executive director of a hospital. And although they are the smallest of our faculties, they probably are the most passionate. On page number 47, we have our Bachelor of Music program. And students in this program have the option to choose from six different streams. There's comprehensive, performance, music theory, history, education, as well as a contemporary stream. Now, after completing two years in the music program, students have the option to move into our music therapy program. This is a program that bridges psychology and music to work towards a new form of therapy. And what's key to that program is clinical investigation. Students would do this at the only university-based music therapy clinic in Canada. We have the only one on our campus. So in the music program, or program students are allowed one hour of instruction instruction each week, with those in the performance stream getting an hour and a half. This can happen in any one of our music facilities found on campus, such as the Maureen Forest or Recital Hall, which is almost acoustically perfect, and no 90 degree, no 90 degree angles in the room or any one of our 36 individual practice rooms. Now you can also do a minor in music, or even just take a couple courses in music, and you would do this by taking the courses that are designed for non-music students. My roommate Brittany was a psychology major along with me, and she wanted to do a minor in music because she loved to sing. So our living room frequently turned into band practice, even though none of us could play instruments or sing at all, as we helped her as best we could prepare for her performances that she did with the chapel choir. So whether you're doing a minor in music, you're a major in music, or you're just taking a couple courses, if you like to sing or you play an instrument, we have a lot of ensemble and performance groups for our students, because we really want to encourage you to hang on to that musical ability, and that is something you don't want to lose moving into university. Now our internationally accredited School of Business and Economics is home to some of our most widely known programs, such as the Bachelor of Business Administration, all of our double degrees, and concurrent, oh not concurrent education, economics programs. The BBA program starts on page number 34 of your book, and all of our programs are listed alphabetically in the following pages. Now, students in the BBA program, that's the Bachelor of Business Administration, we often refer to it as a BBA, 
They get the chance to sink their teeth into business courses right from first year. That gives you the time and opportunity to explore a variety of areas in business that you might be interested in focusing in in your senior years. We have 10 areas of concentration and these range everything from finance to marketing to international business. We also introduce all of our students to the area of entrepreneurship in their first year through the BDO New Venture Competition. This is where students will work in groups, they design a new venture or a new idea, design a business plan for that product, and then present it to your classmates and lab, and then choose winners to go on to present to industry professionals. One of the products that actually came out of this competition was a life jacket that's equipped with GPS technology. That was actually taken to the market for sales, so if you ever see that in the store, that was a group of warrior students that designed that. Cool. This shows you how our business program takes a case-based learning approach. We really want to give you some hands-on opportunities to see and do what you'll be doing as a graduate of our business program. We also have to do this through the integrated case exercise. Now this is popularly known as Ice Week on campus, and this is where corporations from the real world bring us cases that they have to our third year business students, and they take a week, solve the case, and then present it back to the companies. We've worked with corporations like Pepsi, Nestle, Ikea, and Skydome. So when the Skydome changed their name from the Rogers Center, that was the case they brought our students to get some ideas to go how to go about rebranding themselves as the Rogers Center after being known as the Skydome for so long. Anyone interested in accounting, we offer all the 17 designation courses that are required for your CA, CMA, and CGA exams in all of our business and economics programs. So just by completing the program, you'll be set up to write your exams. So now you notice in our picture up here on the bottom of the right hand corner, there is a picture of a building. That's our Global Innovation Exchange building. This $100 million building will house both of our math and business departments in 2015, and that will only build on all the strength of all of our buildings. Now we offer you five different double degrees, three of which you would do solely through Laurier, and two of which you would do in partnership with the University of Waterloo. So at Laurier, for example, you could graduate with a BBA in financial math double degree, and with the University of Waterloo, you would graduate with either with a BBA from Laurier and either a Bachelor of Math or Bachelor of Computer Science from the University of Waterloo. These are five-year programs, and you're walking away with two degrees, so two separate fancy pieces of paper to hang on your wall when you graduate. Students in these programs are also automatically admitted to co-op, so they don't need to apply like the rest of our students, which can kind of be a perk. Now one of the newest programs to our business department is the Bachelor of Business Technology Management on our Brantford campus. This program is taking a socio-technical approach to the study of business. That means it's looking at it from the areas of human resource management, technology, and business, and how all of those are working together in the business world that we have today. Students in this program are also automatically admitted to co-op, so again, they don't need to apply either. And they also have access to Dell Computer Labs on our Brantford campus that are reserved only for BTM students. Nobody else can use them. Now, our business and economics students on the Waterloo campus can also do co-op as well. However, they would apply just like our arts and science students. The application procedure is exactly the same. The only difference is how your work terms will look. So in arts and science, you're looking at two work terms, eight months of paid work experience, Whereas in business and economics co-op, you're looking at three work terms. So you'll have 12 months of paid work experience. My friend April is in one of her work terms with Procter & Gamble. They're the proud sponsors of Moms. Maybe you've seen their commercials. And she was with them during the time that Taylor Swift was becoming the spokesperson for CoverGirl. So she got to work on her marketing campaign and go to some of her concerts for free. So there can be some perks to going and doing your co-op as well. traveling while working on their degree. A few hands. Okay, on page number 26, we have some international opportunities information, and you'll notice that we have connections with over 20 different countries and over 50 institutions <coughs> worldwide. You could be studying to your final exams on the beach in Australia, or you could be taking a study break to meet a friend for coffee at the Eiffel Tower in France. What's great about various exchange programs is that you can continue to pay Laurier tuition fees, so there's no international cost that could be holding you back. Several of our programs also have global experiences built right into the curriculum, such as our Global Studies program, which has a Global Studies experience, where students can take off in the summer for a week, three weeks, a month, however long you want, and have a global experience around the world. You can also have a global experience outside of the exchange, outside the classroom, through any one of our work or volunteer programs that's associated with some of our campus clubs. My colleague TK created the Campus Club Future of Africa, which is now a charity in Ghana, and each summer, he takes a collection of students there for three weeks, and they do volunteer work. This past summer, they went and built a library for a local high school. Now, we're going to switch gears a little bit, and on page number 60, we have some admissions information. 
And all of the programs in this chart are listed alphabetically. So you can find the program you're looking for and you can follow along. Now the first column is your degree column. This is what you're going to be graduating with. Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Music, or Bachelor of Business. You'll also notice that there's blue W's and orange B's there, and that's letting you know which, pro which campus that program is available on. So Waterloo, Brambert, or Brazil, or both. Now the second column is your major area of specialization. This is your major, your program. What are you actually going to be studying? Any areas of concentration that are available within your programs will also be listed in that column. The third column is your high school requirements. This is probably the most important. This is what we're looking for in addition to a 4U English at 60% unless otherwise stated. So that means that some of our programs are looking for a higher English requirement. For example, business is looking for English at 70. We list exactly what courses we need to see and exactly what grades we need to see to add. So you definitely want to keep an eye out for that column. Now the fourth and final column is the admissions range. So at Laurier, we always calculate your overall final average by taking your top six 4U and M courses and only our double degree, concurrent education, and BBA programs will include the prerequisites from column three in that calculation. So I'll give you an example of what the rest of our programs do to sort of make that make more sense. Say for example, we were looking at a Bachelor of Arts in Archaeology. We see that we need to have a 4U English at 60%. If the rest of your courses are 80s or 90s plus, and that English does not fall in your top six, we will not use it to calculate your overall average. We need to see that grade because we need you to have that to get in the program. We will only take your top six to calculate your overall average. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. So on the screen we have some cutoffs from last year's programs. And I know that a lot of students really like to hang their hat on these numbers, but I strongly encourage you to focus on the ranges that are listed in your guidebook because the numbers that you see behind me can and will change based on the quality and number of applications that we get each year. They changed last year. I guarantee you they will change again this year. So focus on the ranges that are in the guidebook and aim at the higher end of the range. Now on page 56, we have some additional admissions information, and there's two forms that I encourage every single student of Latin and Gloria to fill out. The first is the applicant background summary form. This is where we recognize that great students are well-rounded, and this is where we want you to tell us about all the great things that you've done outside the classroom. So maybe you have a part-time job, or you volunteer, or you're in a band, or you are an athlete. Anything that you do outside the classroom that makes you a strong applicant, this is where we want to know about it. In the event that you fall within 3% of the final cutoff average that's established, this form could be taken into consideration to support your application for admission. So that means if the cutoff was an 85 and you rolled in with an 84.5, unfortunately we don't round up, so you didn't make the cutoff, but you could still get the program based on your ABS form. I know students who have gotten in on their ABS form. I know students who did not get in simply because they didn't submit it. It's very easy. It's about seven questions. It's basically just talking about how awesome you are. So it should be pretty easy to fill out. And the second form is your entrance bursary form. This one gives us a little bit more information about your financial needs. And on average, those that are eligible get around $1,000. You could get up to $2,000. This is free money. It's totally in the clear. You don't have to pay it back. It's not like OSAP. So both of these forms are due on April the 15th, that date is on page 56 of your book. Please submit these forms, they're very, very simple, they can help you get in and get started on paying for school. Now on the topic of scholarships and bursaries, on page number 21, we have some additional information about entrance scholarships. And you'll notice in the chart that your scholarship will vary based on your program and your location and of course your grade. You will automatically assess you for these scholarships. You don't need to apply and there's no deadline you need to worry about for those. We just automatically assess you. And you'll also notice that the scholarship farthest to the left, that's our President's Gold Scholarship. It looks a little bit larger than the rest. And that's because this one is renewable for up to four to five years. So depending on the length of your program, you could get up to $20,000 if you maintain a certain GPA. I'm sure your parents will love you even more than they already do if you were to maintain that GPA and get all that money. Now I financed my education using OSAP, and the Student Board's office administered this for me, so it was very easy and painless to be able to get the money that I needed to pay for school. I also helped finance it by working part-time. So I worked on campus for learning services. I also worked at a few restaurants off of campus. We offer you over a thousand on-campus jobs. You can work at the athletic complex, the bookstore, any of the vendors, learning services. There's a lot of ways for you to be able to make some extra money to help pay for school and have something left on the side for weekend and extracurriculars. And I've told you a little bit about the sense of community that we have at Laurier, but I can tell you that I didn't realize how special it was until my very first homecoming football game. 
I was in the first year. I had only been in school for about three weeks. And I just met what felt like a thousand new people who I was not calling friends. And the minute we walked in that stadium and I turned around and saw this insane sea of purple and gold, I realized that I was becoming part of so much more than just a couple of friends going to check out a football game. I was becoming part of this community that has so much spirit and so much pride you can quite literally see it painted on their faces. And it took me about five seconds to realize that I was getting my face painted and becoming a gold clock myself. Now as a student at Laurier, you would have access to all of our student services. You can find some more information about those on page number 12. And we offer these to you because we want to be a part of all of your successes and challenges at Laurier. And we want you to know that we're always here to support you and you're never really alone. So we can help you in areas of your health through Laurier Health Services. We can also help you in areas of academics, through the Accessible Learning Center, or maybe even the Math Assistance Center, which I took full advantage of during my second year stats course. We can also help you in areas of your spiritual and cultural well-being with the Multi-Faith Resource Group or Aboriginal Student Services. Now, if anyone here is part of their student council or student government, or maybe been to an event that they planned, a few? Okay. Well, imagine what your student council could do with a multi-million dollar operating budget. Probably a lot of fun stuff. That's what the Wolf of Laurier University Students' Union has, and they are your student representation on campus. So it's their sole responsibility to make sure that it's a fun and entertaining place for everyone to be. They're responsible for all of our on-campus events. We've had campus concerts like Down with Webster, The Weekend, Alexis on Fire. They're also responsible for what I'm sure all of you are looking forward to, and that's your first year orientation week. From Shinerama, which is our annual fundraiser for cystic fibrosis, to the on-campus party, which is where they close off of campus and it's just this giant party for first years, mm -hmm. to Bingaman's Deep Park Day, where you just take off for the day and go to the Deep Park. It's definitely a week that every Laurier student remembers. I remember mine like it was yesterday. I even saw my t-shirt. Now the Student Union is also responsible for all of our campus clubs. We offer you over 140 different clubs and there really is something for everybody. There's a comic book club, there's a kayaking club, there's even some interesting clubs like the Sandwich Club where all we do is get together and eat different kinds of sandwiches. <laughs> so I mean, if sandwiches aren't your thing and maybe you want a turkey eating club or a sushi eating club, you can absolutely design your own club. If there's not something for you at Laurier, we want there to be, so you can make your own club. Now what's great about all of your extracurricular involvement is that it will go on your co-curricular record. So much like you have a transcript that lists all of your grades in your classes, your co-curricular record will list all the things that you've done outside the classroom and all the skills that you've built doing those things. So this is a really nice addition to any resume or graduate series application. Now on page number 16, we have some residence information. And on the Waterloo campus, we have 17 different residence buildings, and they range from apartment to dorm style, with both single and double rooms. All of our residence assignments on the Waterloo campus require the purchase of a meal plan. So you don't have to buy a meal plan, which I'm sure you would want to do anyways. And we have a variety of shapes and sizes, so you can really design your meal plan to fit your own dietary needs, depending on how much you like to eat. On our Brantford campus, we have 10 different residence buildings. They've all been renovated in the past 10 years, and they're all apartment style. Now, since you have access to kitchen facilities 24-7 on the Brantford campus, there is no meal plan option there. However, there's a lot of dining out opportunities in the downtown core, and there's a lot of grocery stores within walking distance of campus, so you can certainly get your own groceries and make your own meals. If you're not the best cook, trust me, after eating cereal for two weeks, you'll learn how to cook. Now, what you need to know about residents is very true. I did it in second year, it didn't go well. What you need to know about residents is that we have what's called a residence guarantee. That means that any student that submits their application and their deposit by the June 3rd deadline will be guaranteed a place of residence. We'll find you a place to stay no matter what. You can also rank your top two building and room style preferences, so if you prefer a single, double apartment dorm, and those who have over a 90 average will be guaranteed their top choice. Now, in residence, you'll have a residence like Dawn. This is a senior student who lives in the community with you, and they are your big brother, big sister type figure. So they're there if you have any questions, or maybe your roommate's just driving you insane, and you need someone to talk to, they're there for you. You can get involved with residents through any one of our student leadership programs, such as Residence House Council, which is sort of like a student council, but for your, uh, your residents. There's also Residence Athletic Council, which is responsible for inter-residence athletic programming. So you compete against other residences in sports. I played for my first year volleyball team, and it's a lot of fun to be able to take a break from doing homework and meet with other residents. 